Good morning, everybody. It's Wendy with We Do Arts up here in Homestale, PA. I am on the Paint Couture Showcase page for Crafting and Conversation. We're going to be doing a frame with um, Decoupage Queen's papers. Super, really easy, really fun. Um, you can use it for home decor. You could use it for a gift for anybody, teachers, what have you. And I'm just trying to see if my live is going to show up or not on the page so I can follow along with comments. I'll check in just a moment. Um, I just fell off my stool too. So I'm a little discombobulated, I guess you want to say. Um, it says, be reminder to start your video. Well, it'll show up eventually, I'm sure. So if you're here, say hi. Let me know you're here. Um, I see a few of you on, Stephanie, other people popped in. I'm not seeing anything pop up. Um, the Restyle crew is watching. I really need to get caught up with her videos, CC's videos. It's been a while. So hopefully I'll be able to see comments as well. For some reason, it's not coming up on my laptop on the page. Oh, there we are. Okay, I found it. All right, let me make this a little bit bigger just so I can see comments because I do love them. Here we go. Hey, Chandra. Hi, Trish. Lori. Yay, I'm so glad. Okay, let me move this down so you can see what we're working on. We've done frames before. Um, they're easily found at Goodwill, Salvation Army. Retailers often carry frames in their store. I know I have them here at mine down in Homesdale. Um, so this is these are something, oh my, everything's crooked today. It's today Monday and I just don't realize it. Okay, so frames are really easy to find. You can do really small frames, you can do big frames. Um, all you have to do is paint them. Super easy. This one is red, it's a mix of my Baltic black and Russian red. Um, I like the deeper red. Russian red's a little too bright for me, and black is, well, a little too black. So I pre-painted this. I took out whatever was in here, which was like, um, what was it? Good morning, Dee. It was a um, just a picture that somebody left in there. So I took it out, and I'll show you that part towards the end. And I just painted it really quick. I left some of the gold showing, as you can see. Sometimes when you're doing these frames... You can leave some of the underlaying stuff in. And I'm doing a Christmas paper, so I left it all Christmassy. This would look pretty on a mantle. It would look pretty, um, it would be a nice little gift for somebody. You can do this with regular papers, wallpaper, anything really. Printed out digital art paper. Um, just to create your own little art as a gift or for decor is just like really nice. And it's appreciated. So I grabbed some pale gold. Let me make sure this is actually pale gold. I'm really good at saying what things are. It is, yes, pale gold. I had to look at the bottom because I, I messed up my lids. So you let your base dry. Then you just grab a soft tight brush which is what this one is. And I took my staining pads home. So I have some cheesecloth here to kind of wipe the paint off with. And because the base of this is gold and I did not do a solid paint over it, I'm just gonna do some dry brushing. So when you dry brush, you just take put paint on, take paint off. And then I'm just going to just literally slap it on in random spots. This is the fun, I love dry brushing. It makes me feel all artisty. What are you guys working on? Gifts, crafts, home decor, anything, furniture? You know Dee, there's an option to bring people on camera here. I think we're gonna have to do that one of these mornings. So if you guys have never met Dee, she's probably there panicking now going, nope, I'm out of here. 
This was material in here, so I am just going to dry brush right over that. And give that a little bit of gold as well. You can like these these frames you can get for just a couple of bucks here and there. You, estate sales have them all the time. They're really fun to work with. You can do so many different things with them. You can even just leave them. Um, with the initial on them if you want the initial if you like the the existing frame the initial frame if you like the initial frame just leave the initial frame on there the existing frame you know why I think I like dry brushing so much is because you can be as quick or is not as you want. Let me turn the camera just a little bit. I did my camera straight up and down. I guess it's called horizontal, vertical. This morning, I don't know why. Oh my gosh, Laura, you, Jay Shander would love to join. Yes, she would. Um, you crochet, Lori? How cool is that? My oldest crochets, I, I did learn how to do it when I was a kid. It was like basically a requirement, and I never was very good at it, so I kind of gave that up. Good morning, Anne. I hope all is well with you. Hopefully between the two of us, we've got our Facebooks figured out, so you're getting notices now. I am always in awe of anybody who can crochet, because it was never something I was, did very well. So let me pull this back a little bit. The gold's going on it nicely. It's blending with the stuff that's already there. So it doesn't look like I didn't paint the whole thing, which I don't always paint the entire thing on frames. I like to sometimes just let that existing color kind of come through and make it part of the piece. I guess you would call it reloved. All right, so that part's done. That was super easy, painless. So I'm just going to move that out of the way and try not to fall off my stool for a second time. You crochet too, Ian? No, we didn't get fixed. Darn it. Darn it. And Lori only knows one stitch. Well, that is one stitch more than what I know. All right, so I'm going to turn this around this way, and I'm going to open up some Van Dyke Glaze, which is the brown, which which, 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 is when you use brown, you get kind of like that vintage look, which is what I want for this piece. So I am going to get another little craft brush. And this one I'm just going to kind of dip in. And I'm going to do a form of dry brushing. I'm not taking as much off as I would, um, as I did with the, um, with the gold. I want this more to sit kind of like in the crevices than anything else. That's where your dust would naturally settle. So that's where this is mainly going to go. And if you get a little too much on your brush, just kind of swipe it around. It's not going to hurt anything. It'll just give it another dimension. Sometimes it's cool to do like a traditional antique where the person is clean, they dust, they do what they're supposed to do in their house, which is not me, by the way. And, but your little crevices and cra like crevices like in these frames, they never get dusted properly because the dust settles in there. So you just make it look like it belongs. Trisha, I still have your thing here, too, by the way. Your washboard. Just saying. It is safe and sound. 
I have a drop-in studio, and Trish was here to do a drop-in, and she organized a lot of my paints for me, too, by the way, just saying. So I'm just going to pull a little bit off the corners and then get these edges over on this side. Just kind of even that out a little bit. If you don't have these crafting brushes on hand, you can pick them up at retailers. Um, many of them do carry smaller brushes, but if they don't, there's always, you know, the big box stores, Amazon, you can buy packs of them. That's where I get mine. I don't actually sell these, these type. I have another type that's more artistic, but these are perfect for this sort of type of thing. And I have... This part is almost done. Oops. Sometimes you mess up. Like I said, if you mess up, you get a little bit too much on there, just kind of wipe it down. When it dries, it'll just give it another look. Now I'm gonna get into here pretty good because that's what's gonna frame the paper, which I'll show you in a couple minutes. And that's the traditional material. That was like a materially type thing. So I really want that just a little bit darker. A little bit more antique -y. The red and the gold are still kind of coming through. Thank you, Chandra. Dee said you would be happy to do a live with me, by the way, when I suggested Dee do it, but, you know, whatever. Either one of us, we just can't talk to each other because I'll be the one going, huh, what, huh? Okay. Get a little bit darker on these edges like that the piece is going to go inserted into. Got that. Now I just need to do back in here. You guys can hear, but my not my neighbor back there is playing his music. It's classical today. I'll take it. Make that just a little bit more antique. -y. All right. So this is kind of antiqued out. I'll lift that up. It's shiny because it's wet. It will dry matte. And once I lifted it up, I found a couple peep sections that I just got to pull it out just a little bit. Just to give it a little bit more of a uniform look. Okay, so now the fun part. I love working with decoupage paper. I happen to have the decoupage clean Christmas paper. Retailers have all sorts of um, brands. Of course, I'm partial to decoupage clean because that's who I carry. I've got stuff stuck to my shoe. So I'm just going to move this out of the way for just a second. And we'll put that over there. Now, what I didn't tell you when I started this is that piece did not have an insert. So a lot of times we will look at these frames and go, we can't use that because there's no insert. Y'all, cardboard. Seriously, just cut the cardboard. Cardboard is your best friend when it comes to these type of projects. Once you're done, you can't see that it's cardboard. Upside down. Once you're done, you can't really see that it's cardboard. And it looks beautiful. So you get like, everybody has cardboard. We all have cardboard. So this is still just a little bit wet. So hopefully I'll be able to sand it off really quick. 
You um, paint the cardboard white, which is what I did. I used the pearly white from Paint Couture. Then using their satin clear coat, I went ahead and layered the satin clear coat down first, put the paper on where I wanted it, and then I put another coat of satin over it. Um, you can do the spray or the brush, you know, and go around your design, put that on, and then cover the white with other types of elements, stencils, whatever. I was keeping this one a little bit more simple. And then you just, if you do it the way I'm doing it now, I think this was like an old surf prep sander, sanding thing that I have cut up. Sand off your edges so you get a nice clean. Clean edge. These can be done by kids for gifts for grandmas and grandpas, for aunts, uncles. Like I said, you can use any type of medium. You can use wrapping paper. You can do this as regular wall art versus just um, a Christmas type of decor or gift. It's pretty universal. This would look really pretty on a chimney, maybe. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. Cardboard. That's all it is. So we're going to take this piece very carefully, hopefully, because it is still a little wet. And that's the back. Bye. Okay, that's the back. So holding this, I'm going to put the cardboard in. I just sort of cut it based on the when the mirror side, like there was a not mirror, a um, piece of glass in there, it was actually ruined. But I cut, put the glass down on the cardboard, and I cut the cardboard. Where's that? Really pokey prongs that are going to hurt my hands if I do that. You can paint the back of it if you want to get a little, whoops, my prong just fell out. These are old, old prongs. I, I don't know how old these are, but you can tell these aren't like the new style. The new style don't have these hard pokes on them. That one fell out too. I may have to go back in and re-put these in. Because they're falling out so I'll fix that part later I'm not gonna fight with it here but you can just put a little bit of dab of glue on these see they kept, they kept falling out a little dab of glue or you can even go around the edge with some hot glue and just glue it right in either way works I'm actually I may not have to this may hold no I'm gonna have to I'll probably just hot glue around the edge but other than when my little fingers were, which is right up here, and you can barely tell. Because I had left the gold on there, but now you have this beautiful little piece of art that can go hang on a wall, it can hang on a, um, it can go on a mantle, it can go in a classroom, a preschool, high school, whatever, because it's just a little deer in a house. Super pretty, really easy to do. They make great gifts, home decor for yourself, um, for somebody else. Kids can do these. A little bit of paint, a little bit of glaze, and you have this really cute little wall hanging. And that would be session three. And I'll go through and I'll actually glue that on because I don't want to tip it over though. Um, I'll glue that on later since I messed the prongs up in the back. Because they're these weird little prongs. And you can get these 
frames everywhere, literally everywhere. You can check for, you can check your little local retailer. Um, I didn't mean little local retailer. I've had coffee this morning. I don't know if you guys can tell. You can check your, your retailers, see if they have frames, um, Goodwill, Salvation Army, pretty much anywhere, even your attic. You probably have some old frames up in your attic wondering what can do, you can do with them. You can use the little thin frames, these big, more elaborate frames. Anything that can take paint can be upgraded and reloved over into something new as a great gift or home decor piece for this holiday season. So find your local retailer at paintcouture.com. Um, if you don't have one and you need anybody, reach out. Um, we do arts. I'm tagged here. And you guys have a fantastic week. And I will see you all next Wednesday morning. And we'll have session four of gift giving home decor for the holidays. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. And let me know if you have any questions or need anything. Talk to you later. Bye.